everybody, welcome back. Um, today I wanted to share uh, an idea that I've come up with. This is um, the glassine technique. There's a lot of people on YouTube that <clears throat> offer tutorials for this, and I just wanted to give you my take on it. I um, was thinking last night how pretty it would be to, to make some vintage looking um, envelopes with this technique out of old receipts and so there's a close-up. Um, that image when I enlarged it kind of got distorted but, but it's, I'm still happy with the way it's come out. So these are really really quick and easy to make so I thought I'd share with you guys today. Um, <clears throat> I'll set this to the side. First you'll need some old receipts and it's easy enough to find these. I just did a re uh, search for vintage French receipts and I got uh, these two so I was able to print those and then you're going to need <coughs> an envelope board, punch board, so those things you know you'll have to have to do this project. Um, so we'll get started. <coughs> Sorry about my voice again today guys still um, trying to get over this. So what I found is I print on A4 and the largest envelope I'm going to be able to make is going to um, be the three by six and a half. Um, so I'm going to cut this page down to seven and seven eighths. And if you're familiar with how to use the envelope punch board, I'm going to assume that everybody does. If you don't, just do a, um, well, I'll just show you. I'll go through and show you guys. Um, they are very handy. Um, also, you're going to need some oil, baby oil. I'll be honest, yesterday I used vitamin E oil and it smells amazing but it's too expensive to use and today I used vegetable oil so baby oil is the preferred oil but believe it or not I don't have any of that in my in my cabinet I don't know why but I just never seem to uh, remember to pick it up at the store <coughs> let's get that little bit of white off of there. So that's seven and seven eighths and I know I'm going to lose some of this image and that's okay because I will later go back and try to find a tiny um, tutorial that I could do some tiny glassing because I've got these little off cuts here but I haven't had a chance to do that so I will save those. Um, Alright so we can um, Oh, I may as well go ahead and let me. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one at the same time. We'll go ahead and do two on camera. Okay, so both of those have been cut to do the. I cut them at uh, seven and seven eighths, so we're going to end up with a three by six and a half. <coughs> so I'll sit this to the side temporarily. Um, <coughs> if you've never used one of these, you'll find your paper size. Well, first you decide what what size card you want, and then you cut your paper. It'll say paper size, and this will tell you. And then it'll have a line that says score. Can you see that? You only use the score line the very first time. And that's two and three quarters. So what you do is you line this up at two and three quarter. And then you punch this. And then there's an indention here. You just run your little score tool down that. Then you're going to turn this, but you don't worry about that number anymore. You just line this little point up with the line that you have scored. You're going to punch that again, do the same thing, turn it again, line that back up, punch, 
score return and there we go so <coughs> you see we've got everything punched out we'll come back I'm just going to go ahead and do this one quickly while I've got this and then I can sit this out of the way for us um, two and three quarters ship yeah. Yeah, I was, um, I've been wanting to do this technique, and uh, I had a bit of time. I played around with it yesterday, and I love this. The feel is really, really nice. Okay, so I've got that one done as well, so I'm going to set this out of our way. All right, so now the fun part starts. <coughs> you get your oil. Like I said, most of the tutorials recommend baby oil, but... If you don't have it, this worked fine. And what I've done is just get a bit of oil on your, you really need a cotton ball, but I don't have that either. So I've just made do with this. Oh, it's just, I don't know. One day I'll be organized. I make these lists of the things I want to pick up. And then when I start creating, everything just gets jumbled up. The list disappears, so obviously it's out of my mind again. And this is why I never um, seem to pick up the things. And especially when it's, I mean, when else are you going to use oil in the crafting space? So that's why I just, whoops, I should have moved those out of the way. Um, <coughs> that's why this stuff doesn't occur to me. I'm pretty good about remembering thread and paper. But um, anything that's a little bit unusual, I've got to write it down on a list. And like I said, oh, my crafting space gets so jumbled up when I'm working. And then I, at the end of the day, I'm so rushed to try to get everything put away. Because that is one thing I'm super fussy about. Um, I, I do a cleanup at the end of every day because I cannot stand to walk into a dirty workspace I thought, the whole time I was hoping for my own little crafting room, I thought, oh, I can, at the end of the day, I can just close the door and not worry about it. But I can't do that. I'm not, I'm not made that way. It's, uh, it bugs me too much. Okay, that's saturated pretty good. I'll see if you guys can see how that's become really transparent. It is, and it feels amazing. Now, what I've been doing is I go back over it with a dry cotton ball just to pick up any excess oil because you don't want that all over everything else in your journal. So that just kind of absorbs any leftover. So I'm going to sit that to the side. Let's go and get this one done and then we'll start putting those together. Oh, these are so pretty. Yeah, I don't know. I just th I thought yesterday, I thought, oh my gosh, how great will these be on a, um <clears throat> old receipt? And you can just imagine, because then you could do some st stitching to it. You could add your little um, cutouts. Or you can just go to town with it then, and it's just going to look so pretty in your... Um, journal. Or, you know, just to give somebody maybe some die cuts. You could put some die cuts in there for Happy Mail. I don't know. Just so many things you can do with this. It really is so simple. Um, and to be honest, another thing I think, <clears throat> when you get ready to do this, I would start printing these out in bulk and I would just lay them down here because you see all the oil that's that's being absorbed you may as well put that on some of the other images so that's definitely how I'm going to do it in the future I'm going to get it probably 10 or 15 of these printed and then just do a whole process 
And this will just, like I said, soak up anything that's left over. And it's really good for your hands, too, so that's great. <clears throat> and it's really surprising to me. Once you put that oil on it, it, all, it, it really does almost turn this into, like, a glass scene. It's amazing. I love this technique. So there, look at that. So pretty. I hope it's showing on camera. All right, so anyways, back to finishing off the envelope. I'm just going to tuck those in. And I always fold. Oh, I didn't do it, guys. <coughs> before you add your oil, if you're going to round the corner, do that before. Because I, I've done that... On this one, I did it afterwards, and it doesn't want to cut as well. So remember that, and I didn't. So do take note to do all your little rounding beforehand. <coughs> and I would say you're going to need a really good glue for this because... Um, That oil, I don't think anything other than this. I haven't tried it, but I don't believe anything else is going to want to stick too well. I'm just going to put that down. I like, I don't like my, um, I like to fold that bottom part back when I make my envelopes. I just, I like the look of that better. And let's hope. That's going to all grab. Yeah, it seems to be holding nice. <clears throat> yeah, this is where, see, I would have preferred that to be rounded, but isn't that beautiful? Love that. All right, so let's get this one done. Like I said, if, if you're a little bit unsure about that envelope punch board, do a search on YouTube for how to make envelopes, because um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. It's pretty straightforward, but if, it, if you're new to it, it does take a, a little getting used to. Alright, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue there. <coughs> Just a second, guys. At the end of that bottle. I do love how that's come out. So that shows you guys. Now you got three envelopes. Okay, guys, welcome back. Okay, I thought I could just go ahead and um, embellish these with you on camera. So what I've done with this one. I wanted to show you an example of what it's going to look like if you stitch it. I added a bit of that uh, trim and did a zigzag to hold that down. So I hope that's showing. Um, I like it, but I don't know that it really needs the stitching. I'm thinking I probably would just opt to not <clears throat> bother with that step, to be honest. Um, so, let's go ahead and embellish this one. I um, 
have a little bit of cheesecloth. I've cut out some some die cuts. Sorry, let me make sure this is all in frame. Oh, I must get my workstation sorted out here very soon. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue here. Just to hold that cheesecloth in place. Excuse me, guys. <coughs> that glue. <coughs> Sorry, those fumes from that glue really gets my throat going. And then I did the, a little cutout I thought up here would be pretty. Oh, I do like that. So there, you can see. Let's see if we put a little bit of... <coughs> maybe a pearl? Let's see if we can put a pearl on there. I don't know. Sometimes I like to add some embellishment, but other times I do get concerned about adding too much bulk. Because in your journal, it can really look. Yeah, I think it, it needed something. Yeah, so that's, that's how that one's come out. I'm really happy with that. I ended up folding up that edge there because it was a little bit long. And I don't know why, <clears throat> but I didn't like the way that was laying. So... Okay, so we've got that one done. Now this one I cut out some nature cutouts. So these are that 49th and market paper. You know I've been trying to use that up for the last year. <laughs> um, let me just distress those edges real quick. like if I can I always try to show things in some different you know the shabby chic and kind of nature because everybody's really into the nature journals at the moment so I want to make sure that you don't feel as though it's it's just for shabby chic so this one I'm going to get those laid down. Hmm. Let me see. I might put a little bit of trim. I think I'll just have a little bit of that in the background just for some interest so I'll just put a little bit of glue because I'm at the end of my glue and you're probably not going to see much of it but that's okay so I don't want that hanging off too much I'll try to keep I don't mind a little bit of stuff hanging off but I don't want anything that's going to get caught <coughs> within the journal I do love the little um, butterflies that come in that 49th and Market paper. And it is one of the thickest cardstocks I've, I've worked with. It's really nice. Okay, let's get those down there. I like to leave my butterflies so they'll come up if people want to fluff them up. So there you go. I think that's come out really pretty. And this one I'll put... Oh! 
Oh, 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 I know what I'm going to do. Sorry, guys. I'm getting ahead of myself. What I want to do, I've been stamping a lot lately. <clears throat> Here we go. I'm going to take my paper art sheets. I love these little words. And there's one in here that says nature. I'm going to stamp that onto some muslin. And what I do is I, I get my piece that I think it's going to fit on. And, and I stamp it and then I'll come back and take off some of that length because it's going to be too big. I know that. <coughs> You have to use, uh, I use stays on. I don't know. There's probably other inks you can use, but you can't just use that water base. So just be aware of that if you're going to do it on fabric. <coughs> Isn't that pretty? So now I'm just going to snip that on the end. and mess around with some of those. It. So there, I'm going to just put a little bit of glue. If you want to put some uh, stitching around this, you'll have to do it just the um, fabric, because if you stitch that, you're going to close that envelope. Sorry, I know I'm probably stating the obvious, but See, I'm going to have that just, oh, I'm loving that. That really, see, oh, what a difference that makes. Let me put a little bit more glue there <coughs> on that corner. Gosh, this glue, it's feast or famine with that. You can't get it to come out, or when it does, it just oozes out. But it's good glue. There you go. Oh, I'm, I love that one. Love it. So I now think I've got to go back and do something to this. So let me see what I can do because I'll clean that in a minute. Um, yeah, they've got another one here that says bloom. I'm going to do that on that. And that should fit. Yeah, that'll fit right there. So I'm just going to put that about there, I think. Well, let me see. I'll put it there. I think that looks nicer. Oh yeah, see it needed that, didn't it? It was just a little bit too plain. That's really come out. Ooh, isn't it nice when things come out the way you hope they're gonna? Oh, I'm so pleased with that. Okay, <clears throat> this is our last one, guys. Um, I've cut this one out because of the dark ink. I think that's gonna look nice. Let me just ink around those edges. Tone that white down a bit. Um, let's see, we need a little bit of lace. I think I'll just put a little bit of this. I've been trying to get my um, lace organized and it lasts for about a week and then it's all just a big old mess again. <laughs> so I'm going to put that like that I think. 
And then I'm going to put another phrase across here. So let's just get a little bit. Now, I've got another little piece of muslin here. <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can find something that's a longer, a longer phrase there. One second, guys. hope I can get that. Yeah, I'm going to try to stamp the... Ooh, I don't know. I might have got that too thin. If it doesn't work, I'll, I'll have to stamp it on another piece, but I'm going to try to save this one. Yeah, that worked. Just snip a little bit off of those ends. We're just going to get that glued down and then It's a little more blue behind that. I can see that's not holding. If I find that we can use other glue, I will let you guys know in future, but I think you're best to stick with, not that Fabri-Tac, sorry, stick with one of these that's <coughs> a good quality because of that oil on there. And if you all try it, and it works, please share with, with us um, in the comments because I just didn't want to risk it this morning on camera. That would be a big old flop, wouldn't it? So I'm going to put this back around. that one. This needs uh, something. Let me try a little bit of seam binding, guys. <clears throat> Just did some crinkling. So we'll see how this looks. Oh, I like that. That's pretty. Okay, I'll get a bit of natural twine for that one. Okay, let me see. Oops, it's fiddly with these uh, linen threads sometimes to tie a bow. It's easier if you could tie a knot first, but I want this obviously so you can get in and out of it easily. But you know, you really could just slide it off, I suppose. So there, oh, I'm really happy with that. You know, isn't it funny? Now you guys know I love my pastels, but I'm more drawn to these two. <clears throat> hmm. 
Yeah, I definitely favor these over that. So that's really, maybe my tastes are changing. I don't know. That just seems a bit washed out. But anyways, guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments, and I'll get back with you as soon as I can. I'll be back very soon. Take care. Bye.